Leo's welcome. This is your single spread, eight card spread. This is for the first half of December, 2021. I call this Meet Your Soulmate. There they are. On the left, starting with two cards, the emotional aspects. Then the intellectual, the next two cards. And then love and relationship and sex is seen. And the last two cards there represent lifestyle and core values. Okay, now let me get to your reading. <laughs> and uh, forgive me for already having it laid out, but I was well into your reading and um, horrible things happen and I don't know how yet to stall my video. Uh, just noise, that's all, <laughs> you know. But I mean, it was ridiculous noise here. I'm in Mexico. So it's an amazingly quiet place, but I don't really like the noisy. Like, I think it was just a car alarm, you know. And of course, car alarms are weird because nobody pays any attention to them at all. Even the owners, apparently, right? Uh, funny, it gets annoying enough. I guess someone, just more than any concern about stealing anything, it's just like, oh my God, we're going to make this thing shut up. Go pull the battery cables or something. So, that being said, Leo's... Um, I've already gone through this, so let me try again. The bottom of the deck is the Four of Cups. I don't really weigh the bottom of the deck in this reading very much. Don't usually clarify, but I will if necessary, okay? Um, I hadn't actually pulled the last, I just had pulled the first four cards. I went ahead and set it up uh, so I could take a look. So here we look at the emotional uh, aspects of your person, and I'll see here their moon here, and I think I see a Virgo moon here. It's the combination of the Seven of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. Um, earth energy, very strong. Someone who's very grounded. Uh, they would have been very grounded in life. Um, I see this again. With this in this position and representing their moon in Virgo, this was actually a child that was doted upon by the mother and the father. You know, uh, definitely not an accident, if you know what I mean. It wasn't like uh, uh, impromptu. It was a, uh, they have, uh, your person here has a Virgo moon. Um, they were much wanted and cared for. Um, and I believe this person has a pretty good childhood here, which is kind of rare. And they would just be very stable. Already from this, I think that's how you might see them. <coughs> here you have the eight of wands um, so very different energy definitely fire so we're going to have this earth uh, moon and and we have the high priestess here you know with Sagittarius I'm almost hesitant to say but the first thing I think with the eight of wands here is Sagittarius this one going to see the sun you know and if that isn't going off half cocked then what is eight of wands so um you you really have a conflict you know Sagittarius can't see um, the trees for the forest and uh, Virgo can't see the forest for the trees and you know, Virgo's caught in the details can't see the big picture Sagittarius can see the big picture but doesn't even give a fuck about the details and doesn't see them by and large the archetype so it'd be like an inner conflict that they'd have though but they'd be well prepared to deal with it and I think the way they deal with this with the high priestess here is they're highly intuitive. This is in also four cards at the top, the conscious here, the unconscious. Seven of Pentacles, that's the deep uh, unconscious. I often just see that as a Virgo card. It's about discernment, no? So the high priestess, the most spiritual, twelfth uh, house energy, um, where the veil is, uh, dealing with the other side just intuition being an empath um, that's kind of how they would reconcile this energy um, like they may feel their way through things you know uh, they, may, they may say uh, use the word I bet you if you're talking to them well that that feels right to me yeah yeah well hey you want to go to that uh, new Thai place and open up this would be really good do some food I won't be proud of what he knows about it yet. And he'll be like, that feels right. That feels that feels good. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and because that might be the way to plan it, you know, Sasquatch can be pretty laid back, you know. Um, a Virgo mood is anything but laid back, though, so that's maybe how that's taken care of there. And um, so it'd be someone, too, that wouldn't be your typical Sagittarius with a lampshade on their head and dancing on the table type of energy. Uh, might be a little more subdued there. Um, they might have uh, expressed more of their Virgo. I'm, I'm hesitant to say, but I, I kind of wonder with the eight and seven of Pentacles here, if they might not have a Virgo ascendancy too, which would put their moon most likely in their first house, which would give the moon a lot of power o over them. Um, you know, it would have to behave in the way of the first house. So I think it would be like a stabilizing influence. In this high priestess, I bet you in their natal chart, you're going to see some kind of connection between the moon and Neptune. Likely harmonious sextile, you know, trine. Could be a conjunction. So many things uh, that that could be. But something that's uh, allowing them to, um, you know, we don't see any swords here, right? I, like, I don't have any air in my chart. Um, so the way they operate is just intuitive and from a feeling point of view. But you probably wouldn't like, if you didn't really know them, or even maybe if you did, you might not really think of them that way. Like, you wouldn't think of them being this person that's really just operating on feelings. You may not either. That, that's usually a trine. When it's something we don't even recognize, something really great or something not so great, and we don't, we don't even see it in ourselves, that's always the trine and energy. So then I move to, usually here I'm going to see the Venus and here the Mars. And so we are looking at a Sagittarius, huh? Sun, Jupiter, Mercury, and Mars. Full disclosure, okay? I love Leos. Usually I love me. Back. But two of pentacles here. That certainly feels like Capricorn energy there with Sagittarius. So um, Capricorn Venus sign too. That's very stabilizing, I think. So that's coming in for them. And so you have uh, the Earth, Moon, the Fire, Sun. In an Earth Venus here, possibly an Earth ascendant. So you see what I mean? You know, like this is the exact kind of person I'm looking. Okay, I don't, I don't really look particularly interested in uh, this person. Doesn't look like they might necessarily be real interested in tarot or astrology. Um, but if they were, you know, um, they would see that there is this kind of energy to them. Um, so they would probably be the person that says. Astrology is bullshit because here I am, a Sagittarius son, and yet all the things I ever read about Sagittarius, I'm not like that, so it must be bullshit. Well, they might act more like a Capricorn or a Virgo or some Capricorn Virgo cross here, but I believe they do have a Sagittarius Mars. It's not unusual. Um, so they, they, they have a couple conflicts because the Venus uh, in Capricorn does not go with the Sagittarius Mars. Now, I have a Sagittarius Mars, and um, it is, I have a, a Venus in Scorpio. So, it's they're the same way. It's not really compatible. Um, and, you know, there's may, fun made of Sagittarius, but uh, the Sagittarius Mars, by its nature alone, it does want to screw its way through a circus, like everyone, maybe. <laughs> it's, it could be freaky, it could be just adventurous. Mars is sex, I'm looking at here, okay? Um, but, same thing with my Venus and Scorpio, it's so strong. It's like i got a dog on the leash. I'm like, oh boy, can't do it. I want to do it, can't do it. And two pentacles coming in with that Capricorn. It's going to somehow dominate this energy with them. Um, but I think in the bedroom, you would really see their Sagittariusness come out. 
you know. Um, so be prepared for uh, probably be like a very passionate lover, like that kind of like getting it uh, for you need to get to the bed, you know, clothes are already off and um, that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of the way they love, it's very steady. You know, uh, with this moon in Virgo, probably a Virgo rising and with the Capricorn Venus, I mean, this is going to be a Sagittarius that's very solid and is not going to be the type of Sagittarius who also have the wrap. And with the Venus and Sagittarius, as astrologer, you know, you, I would go there. Uh, but you even got to discuss that. Depends. Could be in a fixed house. Could be harmoniously aspecting Saturn. And so then it's a, not a Venus that runs around and wants adventure, right? Um, so with the Capricorn Venus, they it always in relationships they want to be building. And these are exactly not players. Okay. Not anyway. Anyway, this is your person. It doesn't really matter if they're a player. You know what happened happened. But this person, I'm just saying, um, they pro so they're probably not going to have stories about their escapades in life with their, their sexual partners, which thank God for little favors, <coughs> right? <coughs> so I'd say too, there's a lot of dignity about this person too. Virgo uh, is so strong, maybe yeah, because again, it's only ascendant. Um, so there's someone that probably will present themselves as uh, being neat, very well qualified, male or female, like very most likely it's going to like exclude a lot of people, but they're not going to be the one that's all tatted up, that has colorful hair, or they're going to be kind of unassuming, unassuming in their persona here, if they're this Virgo rising, particularly with a Virgo moon. Um, so it, it's also going to be a lot of the energy with this person. It's like what you see is really what you get, you know. And they're not exactly dancing and waving their hands saying, look at me. Um, you just have to kind of get to know them and appreciate how solid they are. I think they're very open-minded between the High Priestess and the Eight of Wands. And that's their intellectual side. So this person's like pretty wide open. Uh, they probably know a little bit about everything because they probably this would be a voracious kind of energy of just consuming and being open and so in any subject you might care discourse they might know a little something also it could be the dangerous person mom worried about knows a little bit about everything this one uh, you know, um, it's a great energy for a writer which is just what comes to mind with this person they might be someone who writes and um, even just technical writing or something, you know. Um, they're very, like, organized because now you have the Knight of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles and the lifestyle and core values, you know, and that's a progression. And I think that's them going their own way. And they're well established in whatever they do. But with this Knight of Pentacles, it's like they knew when they were younger that they were taking a difficult route, that there was a slow route to the mountaintop. And they, for whatever reason, remember that Venus and Capricorn loves to climb the goat. They said, you know what? I know it's slower, but this is what works for me. I want to take this slower route. Um, and remember, they're grounded, grounded, so they're not taking risks. They're doing the right things, making the right choices in their career. And now, I think you're going to find that they're in this King of Pentacles energy, which they got it now. And I think they're very independent here, your person. So I'm not sure what they do. <coughs> Again, it doesn't strike me as someone that might uh, naturally be real inclined towards the esoteric. You never know with the High Priestess here. And it is in this unconscious position of the intellect. So they are, they are open-minded, I would say. You know, someone uh, congenial and open-minded and maybe kind of interesting, you know, but as willing to listen as to talk. So again, not your classic sad archetype, right? So let me know, guys, what you think of this. Um, like, tell a friend, tell a friend. If you think somewhere to share it, some platform, please do. And uh, if you haven't, please subscribe and hit that bell. Thank you, guys.